Hello together! In this video you will learn how to set up and operate the animatronic software that is mainly used to drive the 3D printable face mechanics. But it's not just limited to that. Every time you want to move server-driven mechanics synchronous to music or speech, this software is right. The software can be divided into two different main parts, the runtime part and the teaching part. The runtime part is, for example, if you want to do a ventriloquist like Puppet Show with audience. By pressing the next button on the button pad, the audio will be started and synchronous to that, the relating server movement file will be output to the servos. This results in the impression of a talking puppet. Optionally, text can be displayed on the terminal screen you started the runtime part from, to show the text of your next turn. This can be handy if you don't want to learn the complete text of the conversation by heart. It is not necessary to output a complete sequence. As soon as you press the next button, the subsequent sequence will be output immediately. The previous button goes back to the previous sequence. The repeat button outputs a pre-sequence, for example the words I just said and then the same sequence again. The extra button output some extra sequence such like laughing. This allows some limited reaction to the response of the audience. The teaching part. The teaching part is to generate the movement synchronous to the audio. To initiate a sequence to record, press the start button on the joystick. Immediately the audio will start. Movements of the joystick will directly result in servo movements and all movements will be recorded. Now it is your job to move the joystick according to the desired movement function. As soon as the audio ends, the recording will stop also. So it is required to teach the movement until the end of the audio. Before movements can be recorded, the mechanical limits of each servo should be determined and set as movement limits. This procedure I call servo calibration. During the teaching process, you want that a full movement of the joystick generates a full movement of the servo within its mechanical limits inside the model. For example, a servo can maintain 180 degrees of rotation, but if your mechanics allows only 90 degrees, you need to determine and set the limits. Now, let's figure out the servo limits. First, we move to directory usr local bin. Then we have a short look what's in there. So we can start the servo calibration with servocalib-single.pl. This may take a moment. The left row shows the joystick position normalized to a value in between 0 and 4096. After the calibration of your joystick, this range should be visible when moving fully. The middle row shows you the raw joystick position that comes from the analog digital converter of the Arduino. And the right row shows the raw position value of your servo. To determine the limits, move carefully and slowly to both mechanical ends and note the values for them. You need to enter them later into the configuration file. With the two buttons on the joystick, you can toggle through all connected servos forwards and back to determine their limits also. Which servo is currently in use is shown in the top line. Let's have a look at the configuration file. The configuration file is located in the modules directory of USR local bin. Let's have a short look what's in there. Config L contains the setup currently in use. All other files are backups for the configuration. Use the file with the extension of your mini computer as a template for your work. That means copy it to config L PM. Keep in mind that editing at the wrong point will probably lead to error messages. 
parameters in the globally used constant section normally don't need to be edited. There is one exception, and that is the num servos variable. This is the number of servos you really have in use. If you use self-made joystick, probably you need to modify the parameters in section joystick. The section at the very end of the file represents the names and limit positions of all servos. The meaning of the parameters are shown in the comments of this section. Let's do an example edit. Because we have this time only two servos and we set the num servos variable to 2, we only need to edit the first two lines. The rest can be ignored. The name we change right now is later visible in the Teach software. This helps to identify the right servo during teaching process. As we have finished editing, we save and quit. Now it's time to start the recording software. We move back to the binary directory and list the content. TrackUEPL is the script that does the recording when a joystick is in use. If you use a gamepad instead, use trackue underscore gamepad pl. If you start trackue without parameter, it will come up with an error message and shows you what it really needs. In this case, it's a directory which contains mp3 files. This is the user interface of the teaching software. In the middle, or channel section, you will recognize the two servo names we have just defined in the config lpm configuration file. This is just to show you the effect when editing servo names and the num servos variable. To show you the detailed function, we will look at a more complex model with seven servos. In this case, the 3D printable and adjustable I mechanics. Let's have a look into the directory where the mp3 files reside. We have here five mp3 and four text files. Now we start the teaching script by pointing onto our directory. All configured servos are visible in the channel X and in the channel Y section. Channel X reflects the X direction of the joystick, means left right and channel Y reflects the up-down direction. By clicking into the checkbox in front of the channel name, you can bind servos to a joystick movement. You may bind as many servos as you need at a time to the same channel. Binding more than one servo to a channel is always desirable if several servos need to run synchronous. For example, two eyelids usually move synchronous. However, you cannot bind a servo to the X and the Y channel at the same time, of course. In the process section, you can select record or view. Clicking onto record will bring the software into record mode. This means the software waits for a start button press on the joystick after it will start recording until the MP3 ends or until you press the stop button. If you notice during recording, you did a mistake you just press the start button again and the mp3 and recording starts over again. Recording affects only the currently selected servos. All other servos remain untouched. You may repeat recording as often as you like until a servo movement is as desired. Then you continue with the next servos for your sequence. This time we want to bind both I left right servos to the X channel and both up down servos to the Y channel so we can record the complete eyeball movements in one go. The last channel we need to teach moves the eye angle. Here we use the X channel.
Usually, it makes sense to view the result in order to save it. This can be done by clicking the View button. Pressing the Start button on the joystick starts the sequence. If all servos are recorded, as desired, save the servo file. Clicking on to save does the job. With Prev and Next, you can switch to subsequent MP3s. At the beginning of a record session, usually only MP3 files exist in the folder. Servo files with the same name, like the MP3, will be created using the Save button. If, after saving, you switch to the next MP3 and no servo file exists, the current movements are still in RAM. This means you have the same movements in the next MP3. If you do not re-teach a servo, this can speed up the teaching process a lot if your movements are similar in subsequent sequences. Only the servos where the movements deviate need to be changed. If you prepare MP3 sound files for a puppet conversation, it makes sense to add a couple of second silence to each speech block. This allows to keep the puppet moving while you respond to the puppet's words. If the movement ends immediately after the speech, the puppet looks frozen while you respond. After recording all sequences, it's time to bring the puppet to life. Now we start the runtime program. Because we are in the mp3 directory, a dot as the directory argument is enough. Pressing the next button starts the show. Hi, are you the 3D printable adjustable robotic eyes? Yes, I am. And who built you? Hey, stupid. You don't remember? You were the one. Sorry, I just mean you may say it. Meaning is not say, you know? Who? I don't know what to say now. If you don't know what to say, better shut up. <laughs> 